John Bradman, uh, due to illness, was unavailable to play in the first test. He, uh, uh, we missed him completely there, of course, but fortunately for us, Stan McCabe came to light with one of the epic innings of test history. There, he scored 187 not out, and really, he pulverised the English attack. Had we been lucky enough to have had Bradman operating at the other end with McCabe, I'm certain that Bodyline would have died its death long before we decided to call it, or started to talk about it being Bodyline at all. England won the first test quite handsomely. Bradman was back in the side for the second test. He got a duck, bowled bows in the first innings. Then in the second innings, he got a beautiful century. spin bowlers won the match on a wearing pitch and we went off to Adelaide for the third test one all and with our with our tails well in the air <laughs> crowd reactions in Adelaide were extraordinary the, the uh, a big crowd came each day to the match and uh, they viewed this uh, body line theory with great hostility and they let us know right throughout the game how hostile they were towards it. England starts badly but Leyland, Wyatt and Painter rescue them and they total 341. Australia starts badly too. The pace of Allen and Larwood is too much for the Australian batsmen. Captain Bill Woodfull faces Larwood. Bill Ponsford makes a welcome return to form with 85. And Oldfield is second top score with 41. That's a single from Oldfield off both. But he tries to hook a short ball from Larwood. Fear they might invade the oval. Woodfull comes on to escort wicketkeeper Oldfield from the field. He takes no further part in the game. I was the next man into bat, and from the time that Oldfield was hit until the first ball was bowled to me, it would have been at least ten minutes. The crowd reacted so badly that Harold Larwood, sitting on the ground way back in the in the distance refused to bowl until the crowd cooled down. So that 10 minutes was given me to get ready to the situation. The, there were mounted troopers outside the, the fence over by the Richardson gates who had instructions, I believe, to ride onto the ground if the crowd became obstreperous. The, uh, the, the, the result of all that was that the feeling between the two teams, which had never been really good, then became absolutely hostile. Uh, it was an Australian thought it beneath his dignity to talk to an Englishman and vice versa. They didn't like the, the idea of talking to us either. So no wonder 
the stage was set for the intercourse of cables between the Australian Board of Control and the MCC. Uh, Woodfall spoke to Plum Warner. Plum was the manager of the of the English side and he was one of the really big shots of English cricket. He came in to apologise to Woodfall for the hit that he'd got and Woodfall had nothing more to say than, look Plum, there are two teams out in the field there, one of them is playing cricket, the other is not. Body line without doubt was the determining factor of that series. It was designed to cut Bradman down to size. It did that because Bradman's, uh, his average was cut down from a three-figure average down to the 50s. So if that's what they set out to do in the first place, they did it without doubt, and therefore away they went with the Aces. Lee to Hammond. That's a six. And so England have won the series by four tests to one. Body line was eventually banned. Both countries got together in their legislative fields and they decided that it was to the best advantage of the game not to allow it to be played any longer. They put it into the hands of the umpires under the, an intimidatory bowling uh, piece of legislation and from that time we've never had the slightest sign of body line in test cricket. We get bouncers nowadays, of course, but bouncers and body line were as far apart as the poles. <laughs>